Hello and welcome back to the Perceptive Leadership Series. My name is Kellen and today I'm joined by my brand new co-host Rachel Moore, which is so fantastic. Super excited to have you with me today, Rachel. Good morning, Kellen Crow. It's nice to be here with you. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're kicking off an amazing uh, new, new stint of this series. I'm happy to be here, obviously. Yes, yes. And today we're joined by one of my favorite Perceptive Perceptives, uh, Anthony, and over in uh, South Africa, who is our senior ops manager over there. And today we're going to be talking about mentoring and growth in the company and talking about our customer a little bit. Super excited to dive in and just have some really cool conversations, both with Rachel and Anthony. So really excited. But before we kick off, uh, Anthony, why don't you put us on the map a little bit, tell us where you're from and kind of just a basic overview of who you are and what you do. Yeah. Thanks, Kellen. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Name is Anthony from sunny South Africa. The sun always shines in South Africa. Um, been with Percept of the Shire for five years. Been a fantastic journey. Enjoy the vibe. Enjoying having these conversations with you guys. Um, I'm based in Centurion, which is in Gauteng, in the central part of South Africa. And yeah, super excited to be here and looking to contribute any way I can. That's awesome. Uh, and and. Anthony, I'm so excited to meet you too. And again, I, I'm pretty new to Percept everyone, though I, I've called myself a veteran since I've been here for a month now, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. But uh, Anthony, I, I know one thing we kind of talked about off air as we're getting ready to, to jump into this conversation with you. Um, can, and I'd love to hear a little bit about this. And again, this is, you know, like I'm new and everybody else who might be new to you. Um, what has been your journey at Percept? I would love to kind of hear about that. Like, how did you get started and, and what's your career growth been been here? Yeah, so I actually did join a senior operations manager at the business uh, just shy of five years ago. Um, we got a we got a complex site over here. We actually based at um, when we were still in the office back in the day. We actually based at the Silverton assembly plant in the city of Swanee, where the next gen Ranger and Everest, uh, next gen Ranger is produced. Uh, so we're very fortunate to be on a, on a production site with having all the people access to it from quality to engineering and, and the likes. And we also support multiple programs on site. We support not only in South Africa and our neighboring countries, but we support uh, Germany tier one as well as administration and, and email, for example, for the UK client as well as for the Australian client. So that's all. Uh, and we also support um, the Middle East, the Gulf Coastal countries, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, seven of them via telephonically, and the vast majority of North African countries as well. We support from our site in South Africa. Wow, that's that's a lot. Kellen, that's a lot. That's a lot. I know. I know. Like, every time he tells me that, I'm like, gosh, I don't even know how you keep track of all that. That's really awesome. I know. My my brain was just darting around the globe. Like, I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. You're yeah, covering I mean, a lot of, lot of real estate there. <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. And it's uh, it's cool to hear uh, about that. And so why don't we just kind of start talking a little bit about that, uh, that growth and, and just, you know, what you kind of do. I mean, you were like Rachel said, off air, you're kind of talking to us a little bit about step level meetings and stuff like that. So why don't we just kind of jump right into that? Yeah, so we implemented something in, in, our, in our South African team, uh, I think it was the last two years, being remote. You know, when we were in the office, you used to have that interaction. You could stop by Rachel's desk and, and, and say, Rachel, how are you doing? And they would mention, oh, you know, there was, you know, something's not sitting right with me. You know, can you please look into this, for example? And, and then you would, you would walk on to the next person and, you know, you'd meet somebody by the water cooler and you would have a similar type of conversation uh, about how's the family in school over the case maybe and we thought we kind of lost that that connect by going remote so we had water cooler conversation where we jump in a room and make jokes for example but you do get people for example that are not comfortable speaking in a in a type of environment in front of other people yeah. and they want a more personal space at the end of the day so because i didn't have an office to go to and close a door or a boardroom we implemented something called uh, skip level meetings where anybody in the organization could have access uh, to myself directly for example so the idea was not to have to get rid of your deputy operations manager or your team leader, or your supervisor, for example, is that uh, a team leader could come directly to me, for example, and have and have a discussion about what's happening in your life, for example. Hey, I've got this. Hey, you know, you're a dad of of a of a teenager and obviously a, a slightly older child, for example. I've got this challenge with my child at school, for example. Can you give me advice? I've got this in my professional career. I'm battling. I don't know, mm -hmm. to get the team buy-in, for example, and say, you know, the team's not gelling together well. What have you used in the past 
to motivate teams to get them together to pull together in the same direction do you have any ideas or i've got this idea but i'm I, you know i really don't feel comfortable mentioning in a team meeting you know what do you think of the idea you know would it work can we add a couple of things for example and yeah you know, people can can have direct access <clears throat> to anybody in the organization um through via these skip level meetings for example and actually just have an audience and just have a, a chat like we're having today i can i just say and everyone watching this right now that's amazing. You should be doing this. Every company should be doing this, in my opinion. Um, I love that. I mean, and we can dig into this a little bit in several, a few aspects here is because one, I, I love that you, you know, you're recognizing the environment, how it's shifted where, uh, and I'll use a, a quick example. One of my old bosses who might watch this, uh, I used to, when I would get really frustrated and I'm a very dramatic person, you, you all will start to learn this about me. Um, I, if I was getting super frustrated about something, I would go into her office and she'd see me come in and if she wasn't busy or something. I would dramatically throw myself on the floor of her office, like mostly just to like express it. I can't even right now with, with what's going on. And she just, she took it in stride. She's like, all right, what's going on? But, um, but you're right. There's, there's a touch point there that we did lose. Uh, and you know, some of that's coming back obviously with people being able to, to join offices again, but I love that you were cognizant of the reality everybody was in and that you welcomed uh, the whole person. Yes, that's right. 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 Where, yeah. where it's like I can talk about, you know, Kellen's, you know, his family and his travels and his his interests and stuff. Exactly. And that's all part of the work experience still. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say too, Rachel, is the fact that you recognize people as people, not as just a robot employee. And that's so important. Yeah in today's world. And especially with that, now that we are remote, I mean, we don't get a lot of opportunities to interact with people in that level. So I think recognizing that is so great. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and Anthony, I want to ask you too, um, with the skip level, I mean, does this come from, because it's such a great idea. And sometimes these, these things we do and try to activate for our employees come from history we've had ourselves, right? Where Maybe we've seen what works and we've felt what doesn't. Um, how has like your own background with managers you've had uh, kind of helped frame up how you are opening these doors for for your employees and things like that? No, most definitely. I, th I think it's a great question, Rachel. And what I've done is I've taken the best um, and the worst of, of we've all had great managers and we have have had not so great managers yep. <laughs> and we always like to focus oh no i really enjoyed kellen i mean he was an awesome boss for example but rachel which, who was the with the not so great boss we can learn from from her as well and <laughs> and i like to take the best of both of those for example and like what did i enjoy about being managed well and what did i enjoy about not being managed well and and take the best of all those out and, and try and make it my own for example and and and, and pave my, my own way and I was very, I've been very fortunate to have where I could walk into a manager or a director's office and just get on my soapbox for example if I have mm -hmm. to and have yeah. a moment or just have a sit down and say listen you know, I just got off a tough call for example can I come hide in your office quickly uh, for <laughs> yeah. example and have that conversation so I had access to that and, and I think it's the only right thing to do to continue that and mm -hmm. to evolve it as we're going and I think working remotely or in hybrid has actually just enhanced that in that we, we need to be more cognizant of that because there's things that we took for advantage when we were in the office. Is someone just walking past your office having a five minute conversation? Yeah. I mean, and you know, there's no real, this is something that we haven't totally experienced as far as like everyone being pretty remote. And I know we're kind of going back a little bit, but it's just such a new thing. And it's like being able to recognize that is just what mm -hmm. makes you guys such great leaders. And it's really, really great to know yeah. that that's happening um at the company that i work at but across the globe not just here in the states but anywhere so i love that yeah no and i i have the same approach and, and hopefully you know kellen is you know he's on my team so hopefully yeah. it's, hopefully no one's just like oh my gosh you know well, he, he got hit the nail rachel, on the head there i was gonna say rachel's a great boss everybody yeah. so everyone knows well but <laughs> And, but this actually too, I mean, Anthony, I love that you pointed that out. Um, I, that's been my practice as well. Um, I, th you're right. We all have the reality in the background. I can't, if anyone out there is watching and you're like, no, I have never had a bad manager. Please comment on this post and let us know <laughs> where did you work? Who was it? Give them a yeah. shout out. Um, but you're right. I think sometimes it's, it's easier to be a good manager if you just look back and say, I'm not going to do what that awful manager did. You have a, you know, now you're, there's your roadmap to not be a bad manager. Um, but, uh, I, and I, I know you've talked a little bit too about, um, mentoring, 
which I think that I feel like that's a almost a hyper extension of, of, you know, your, your average garden variety management. Can you talk to us a little bit about kind of your, your stance or your, your, um, your views on how important mentoring is? Rachel, your team, your team is everything. Um, I encourage any person viewing this today, can, if you can answer every email, uh, if you can answer every phone call, you can do every coaching and calibration session, you can do all those things yourself, well, then you're definitely a superhero that, that, that we need to meet because right. your, your, your team is everything and the components put together. And, and we have a responsibility as, as leadership to the lessons that we have learned that we spoke about earlier and the, and the miles that we walked in, in, in our shoes is to, to hand that down to the people coming through the ranks and for lack of a better word, the school fees I have paid to teach them to to others and how not to make those mistakes. Or even more importantly, you, you don't have to be me. You have to be better than me. Yeah. And and if you can, if I can do that, then it's it's my responsibility uh, for to the organization and obviously to the managers, the great managers I've had in the past, to to continue empowering people, teaching them, putting them out in front. For example, it's not it's not just it's not just one person that makes a, makes a team. Um, you need you you need to have that team around you to forge the way forward, and and you need to keep on teaching and mentoring them and and keep them on uh, on that journey of their own self development improvement. That the next the next senior operations manager does come with from within Perceptor potentially, or the next op, uh, the next team leader comes from the floor that experienced all those uh, those, those experiences. And mm -hmm. we need to do it to every single person in the organization, for example, uh, to keep on growing them and and and, yeah. and showing them the skills in the way. Yeah, I Kellen, go ahead. I think I saw you <laughs> ready to opine. Well, I was just gonna say, man, I feel so, and this is just me being straight up, like. I feel so fortunate to be on this call and talking or on this, on this thing and talking like this, because this is stuff that you don't always get the opportunity to be part of talking about this and learning how people manage other people and, and are, and are doing mentoring. So for me, I, I'm like, I'm sitting here sucking it up like a sponge. So <laughs> this is just really, really great conversation. I love it. Yeah. And you know, Anthony, you're hitting on something. I think it can be super easy to forget for, for managers and anyone, but you're thinking of what's next. Yeah. Um, you are having, that's a growth mindset where it's not just, all right, I'm only fixated on this will always be my team. My team will always have the same people in the same roles. And that's going to be the status quo for perpetuity. But you're not thinking that way. You're thinking, no, I have this team. My goal as a manager is to help them continue to level up, skill up, um, to, cause eventually what if they become, you know, they, they, they get promoted upwards. They, they take on more responsibilities that fulfills them. It fulfills the team. And you just create this constant, um, so, you know, constant growth area where everybody can excel and feel great. Um, I really appreciate that you have that view. Um, and, and, you know, more managers out there get out of that fixed mindset and think about how is this team growing? Even if that changes the status quo, right? Yeah. And, you know, the other thing I think that's a really good point here is you can learn from a good manager and you can learn from a bad manager. I think that's important because right. it's easy to say, oh, I like that. I can do that. I could do that. But it's really important to say, oh, I don't like that. I shouldn't do that. So I think that's important, too, to kind of just keep that in mind that, you know, there's always opportunities to learn. Sometimes it's learn what to do and sometimes it's learn what not to do. And I think they're both equally as important. Anthony, do you have, um, when it comes to actually mentoring, um, what, what's your process? Like, do you, are you like, uh, is that something you do weekly with somebody or like, what, what do you think is a good framework for a successful mentoring, um, relationship that you're having with an employee? Uh, weekly or every fourth night, um, is sufficient and it could be a half an hour, an hour. I, I normally allow the people to set a tone themselves. I allow, allow them to set the, the agenda themselves as well. It's not mm -hmm. my agenda. It's their agenda. And what's important to me is not necessarily important to them. So every weekly or every fourth night, I would say is, a, is, a, is the bare minimum. And it's, and it's a journey. And I always say to people, it's like, you know, your goal is nothing. It's only, it only remains a dream if you don't put a timeline to it. And what are yeah. we working towards? Uh, on that journey, for example, and as I said, you know, it can it can be whatever is at top of your mind on that day, what you what what you battling with, for example. And if we need to put out a couple of extra sessions, by all means, but I will move it around to make it work. 
um, and bump another meeting out if I need be, if it, if it, if it suits you right now yeah. at this date and time and, and commit to it. Because what we tend to do is we tend to look at our diaries and say, hmm, you know, a skip level meeting, no, no, Mark can wait. <laughs> Not cool. Oh. No. Mark's yeah. got that time. He's put that. He's made the effort to make that time. So you're owing that time. He's just as important as any other person that you're hosting a meeting mm. for or contributing on that day. Super. Uh, thank you for saying that too. I, I I appreciate that. That you're not. It's not like looking at saying, oh well, that's just Mark, or you know, that's that's something because that takes some guts. It's really hard, I think, for people who may not be, you know, they're, if they're doing a skip level, you're making an appointment with someone who's a higher tier than you as far as a title, or perhaps that can be really intimidating, right? Definitely. And I think that's probably the biggest hurdle because who would approach, uh, who would approach now the, the, the senior operations managers to have a half an hour of his time. And I think that's a mindset we have to move away from. It's very old school, very like that's the way we used to operate you can't you can't go directly to the director's office that's just not allowed you've got to go past the secretary first i don't have a secretary so my diary is open to you for example <laughs> and it's a mindset change that's a, it's a newer way of doing things um mm -hmm. uh, and and we need to adapt that because as i said we, we need to grow as an organization we need to grow as people and there needs to be that symbiotic relationship as we move forward absolutely yeah, that's that's really great. And man, I can't uh, I can't thank you both enough because this is just like, again, wealth of knowledge for me. Um, going to go to the kind of the, the last topic that we were going to talk about today. Um, one of our values at Percepta is culture of service and culture of service is about making it easier for others. And you really talk about that a lot, Anthony. And I think that's something that uh, I mean, we're seeing it here clearly mm -hmm. uh, talking about our customers and who they are and, and trying to make it easier for them. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about how, how you approach that? Yeah, I say I always I say, who is your customer? Your customer is anybody that actually asks you for help. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a fellow employee that has a query on 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 their salary advice, for example, and don't understand their query. And if you feel comfortable coming to me to solve their query, you automatically become my customer. I have to manage your expectations. I have to say to you, I get back to you whenever I'm going to get back to you, and then I commit to them getting back to you within that time frame. And I have to see your query to resolution. Whether even I delegated, you still came to me to help you with a query. Right. I take ownership of your query, and I see it to the end, for example. And the the secret here is that. If you can't deliver customer service to an internal person, be a fellow employee, for example, how are you going to deliver customer service to or create a customer experience to an external customer? And mm -hmm. your internal customers, your fellow employees are, are way more accommodating, trying different things and different ways of doing things because they know you personally, for example, with a customer phoning in with a concern, uh, whatever they may be driving a vehicle or whatever project you, you support is that it's the first time you speaking to them and it's the first time they've experienced that and it could potentially be on potentially one of the not so great days of their life for example um mm -hmm. but yeah you can you can learn that by treating your internal customers just as fairly and as well as what you would your external customers so anybody's mm -hmm. your customer you, you better take that mindset approach I, you know, and I, Kellen knows this too, I, and he's probably heard me say this in some of our team meetings. Um, I often call our internal, you know, teams that ask us for stuff, our clients, you know, where we are, they're asking for something that we can deliver that they ne not necessar cannot necessarily deliver themselves. And we're giving them a service and we're supporting them in what they need to accomplish through what we can accomplish. And so I, I, I love that. I think if all of us could make sure we're treating our internal colleagues and team members like our customers, uh, that would carry a th through a lot of really good results, probably. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's great. And it's such a good approach. And it just creates such a good culture overall here at Percept. I mean, all the things that we've talked about on this call today, in my opinion, uh, come together and bring this awesome culture to what we are as a, as a company, as a group. And it's just fantastic. I mean, it's such good stuff. It is. Um, can I ask? Uh, do, uh, I'm gonna, Kellen. I want to go out, go rogue a little bit here. Yeah, go. <laughs> oh. uh, Anthony, can can we ask you some questions about yourself? Is that is that? Yeah, cool? sure. Go. Okay, cool. Uh, is there anything that you're listening to, watching, or reading right now that you cannot put down, whether for per professional or, or personal pleasure? But would love to hear like what what you're into right now. Um. A book lying on my dine stand is a book by John Grisham, a nice legal, thr legal thriller. Okay. Um, that's that's it off at uh, out of the uh, off the bookshelf a couple a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, that's uh, that's on there on TV. 
uh, on Netflix, watching that Formula One season, that do that documentary they got. So very, nice. very interesting. Uh, wow. A bit of reality TV meets Formula One meets a bit of a soap opera type scenario. So yeah, that's what's <laughs> that's that's what's happening in those two aspects. Yeah. I want to watch that that Formula One series. I've heard uh, I've heard of some good things about it. Kellen, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's fun. It's different. It's something that in the states we don't see a lot of it, so it's mm -hmm. cool when we do. So yeah, yeah I, love it. I love it. I think my I I and I was late to this. I didn't see it when it came out. The Ford versus Ferrari movie. Um, that that was talking about the first like Ford Ford competing yeah. with Ferrari, and so I. I, I get, and I, my, my husband is a, is a gearhead. Uh, he's building a rat rod in our, um, for, in our, uh, garage. If anyone wants to know a rat rod is just comment below and I'll, I'll tell you what I understand mm -hmm. it to be. It's not a hot rod, but rather more of a Frankenstein -y kind of <laughs> car, uh, something, but, um, no, that's, that's amazing. And then Anthony, uh, I guess I just love to know too, like, uh, have you taken a vacation that you just loved or where would you, your ideal vacation place be? Anywhere where there's no internet and technology. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't do this is what you're saying. So, you want so, to go away. Yeah. Uh, we stay in an absolutely phenomenally beautiful country. Mm. Um, and you can go not very far and 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 be in the mo and, and feel actually extremely remote. So whether it's the case in Midlands, for example, or, or the Lowfeld, for example. I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa, which is a beautiful, beautiful city. That's that's hometown. For example, we stay in a fantastically beautiful country, and, and you can go literally very close by with a little bit of fuel in your tank and just experience uh, a bit of nature, you know, and just get away mm -hmm. from that proverbial rat race. So, yeah. Rachel, I think we need to come up with a business excuse to come visit, <laughs> visit Anthony. Like, <laughs> I would, I would love that. That'd be amazing. I mean, again, yeah. it's it's like what's possible with you know virtual versus you know I could go look at Google Images. It's not going to be the same. <laughs> But yeah, but no, and I, I love that too. Denver, we're in the same place where I, I can, I've been telling people like I can walk out and go to the corner of my block right now. I can see the mountains and in about an hour I can be where you cannot reach me, which <laughs> there's something attractive about that. Not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, Rachel, did you have anything else for Anthony or? Uh, nothing unless Anthony, do you have any other things you want to make sure our, our listeners or viewers know before we leave just about generally being awesome? <laughs> yeah, God, the, the point is take take the time to encourage, spend time and mentor. Remember the people coming up through the ranks, for example, are the guys going to be helping you with healthcare, pension? Yeah, they're going to be the guy in the in the grocery store handling your query when something broke, for example, whether you're returning it to a big online retailer or physically in store, for example, and the skills and knowledge that you can impart on that on the, the next generation coming up will bide you in your favor one day when you on retirement, for example, or have a query that maybe you could have had some part in, in that person's journey and, and made an impact on them. Oh, I want to actually, and I'm sorry, I'm going to dive in with one last thing. Cause this, again, this was an yeah. important thing that, that Anthony brought up offline that uh, we talked about all of this, like why it's important. Here's why it's important. It's important for people. It's important for, you know, growth and things like that. Anthony, you've got actually though, some amazing, uh, you shared an amazing stat with us that I, I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't let you share. Um, you mentioned something about how many staff have been promoted to senior roles in the last five years. Would you share that? Yeah. Yeah, so what we started with the journey was to identify talent in the business when I joined. Um, and what I did was identify people that have talent and have contributed to the business. And whether you went to QA, whether you went to L&D, whether you went to a more senior role within, uh, within the, the environment, team leader, supervisor. Um, I mean, our deputy... CX operations manager has been with us 10 years. You started on the lines 10 years ago mm -hmm. and, and grew those people. And it was just over 30% of our staff had moved into another role that was more senior than the one that they started in the business with wow. before that. And then we just backfilled the position in, in at the low environment. Uh, yeah. Wow. Th th that's three out of 10 people, everybody. I mean, that that's amazing. That's growth. And, and yeah. I think that's what people are looking for, Kellen. I don't know what you think about that. It, was, it oh. just blew my mind. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, you know, to be honest, it doesn't surprise me that Anthony's doing this because he is, I mean, he's been saying this stuff, but he lives it. I see it all the time. Anthony's always willing to help come on. And whether we're announcing people for customer service week or bringing this live to you guys today, whatever it might be, um, always, always more than willing to help out. And it's just, uh, it's just who he is. And it's, yeah. it's very genuine. It makes sense. It's awesome. Not surprised. So, well, 
Anthony, it's always a pleasure. And we thank you so much for all the things that you're doing, not just for us here, but for all the folks at Percepta to just have that visual mindset of growth and keeping people, um, you know, first and foremost, because it's who it's what we have. We don't make or manufacture anything. It's our people that are That's keep right. us going. So thank you for all that you do. Thanks for joining us today. And we will definitely see you again, I'm sure, on the Leadership Series or on something else that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anthony, yes. It's great to meet you. And, and thanks for sharing some time with us today and for everyone watching as well. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Stay tuned. More to come. Bye. 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 <laughs>